Nick Wild Web, heavyweight, 11 and 9, 9 knockouts. Subscribe to Sport and Icon for your latest boxing news. Come! So Anthony Joshua has pretty much released his game plan. Now whether this game plan is true or not, we don't know. But um, of course he was given an interview about his upcoming fight with Joseph Parker and how he sees this fight. And this is what Anthony Joshua had to say. So this is his statement. I like to fight. That's the main objective and showing I'm never shy of competition. He's a respectful competitor. He is the WBO heavyweight champion of the world. So it's like one step closer to adding that strap to my legacy. It's what makes it exciting. But Parker hasn't been taught ring generalship and how to cut off the ring because he was following Huey Fury around. You need to be able to corner your opponent. But nevertheless, he got the win, which is always the main objective, right? But ring generalship is always important. But in this situation with the heavyweight division at the minute is that all the champions are still learning fighters. I won't pick too many faults yet as, of course, he's still learning too. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to smash him up to the body. What slowed Carlos Takam down was when I started punching him to the stomach. Jab to the stomach, right hand to the stomach. If someone has got a strong head, then you hit him to the body. It's quite simple. So if Parker does have a granite chin, I'll weaken his body down. So that was Anthony Joshua's statement. And he's kind of right in a lot of ways that if your opponent has got a very granite chin, as allegedly Joseph Parker has, and there's no reason to disbelieve that he doesn't, because uh, he's taken some flush shots and he just keeps on coming forward. So what do you do? You weaken the body. And he's absolutely right with that one. But of course, is he giving away the game plan? Unlikely. Anthony Joshua is not really a body puncher. He's a headhunter. That's what Anthony Joshua does. He sets up with a jab, hits you with a straight right hand. But of course, he's very, very good with the left hook as well, which again also sets up. Um, the uppercut from hell that he gave Vladimir Klitschko. I'm not even sure Joseph Parker could stay on his feet for that one. And it's like I've said before, um, I fully expect a war between these two. I don't expect a one round stoppage or two round stoppage at all. Neither one of them have the the heart to stay down. So if they get hurt, they will keep on coming forward. We've seen Anthony Joshua, his tank got emptied, but he stuck on in there and withstood a barrage of punches and kept coming forward, right? With Joseph Parker, again, he's been hit flush on many, many occasions. But of course, now his defense is a little bit more acute than what it ever was. So he seems to have lost that killer instinct of going for the kill because now he's working on his defense. So of course, when you add something to your repertoire, you lose something. And that's pretty much what he's done. He seems to have lost a bit of that power, if you like, in his punches, a bit of snap. But that's not to say it's not there. And that's not to say that if he hits Joshua, it's not going to be lights out. It's heavyweight boxing. Joseph Parker has a very, very good punch in power. And his punch resistance is phenomenal. But of course, he's never been in there with somebody with combination punches and big punches like Anthony Joshua, who will hurt you with both hands. The left hand hurts almost as much as the right hand, as in power. And even if it doesn't put you out or buzz you, it will certainly put you off balance. It will certainly push you back when you get hit with it. You're not going to keep on coming forward if you're eating up those shots because at the end of the day, Parker is only a man. He's not a machine and he will eventually crumble if he takes too many of those shots. So I do expect Joseph Parker to hit the deck at some point in this fight. Now, as far as going back to what Anthony Joshua was saying here, he's again, he's absolutely correct where he said the champions are still learning. But of course, you can't put Wilder in that one. He's had 39 fights. On what planet is he still learning? But with Parker and AJ, both of these guys, their careers have pretty much run alongside each other. So they started around about the same time. They've had around about the same amount of fights. Joshua 20, Parker 24. So again, yes, he's still learning. And of course, Joseph Parker is as well. Neither one of these are the finished article. In fact, they're not even close to being the finished article as of right now. After another three, four years, 
then we'll get a good perspective of exactly how good these guys are. So if anybody wants to try and get a notch on the win over either one of these guys, then now is pretty much the time to do it. Because as each fight progresses and goes on, the better and better they become. Now, Joseph Parker against Huey Fury was an excellent learning fight for him. And he's right, he didn't trap him. But it's very difficult to trap somebody like Huey Fury because Huey is very, very good on the back foot. He's very, very good defensively, just, just as his cousin Tyson is as well. Hence the reason why Vladimir Klitschko struggled with Tyson Fury. So I don't read too much into that one. I take that as a, a good learning fight for Joseph Parker, much like Takam. Now Takam was lacing him up on quite a few occasions in that one. And again, he weathered the storm and did enough to win that fight. And exactly the same with Andy Ruiz Jr. But of course, when you get in there with a real tall opponent, obviously um, with a Huey Fury as well, um, Huey Fury, again, was very back-footed, as you say there. Um, but the last big guy that he fought was Dimitrenko. And he rocked the crap out of him. I mean, he beat up Dimitrenko like he was nothing. Like, like he was still an amateur. And Dimitrenko took a knee and this, that and the other. It was embarrassing for him. But still, that shows that Joseph Parker isn't afraid to face the bigger man. Now, Anthony Joshua, there were times against Carlos Takam. Now, bearing in mind, Takam and Parker of, are of similar kind of stature, similar kind of height. But Joseph Parker does hit a lot harder. But he's not as accurate as Takam. That's just my opinion. Whereas um, Takam will place his shots. And, of course, he will throw a lot of haymakers as well. But um, Joseph Parker swings for the fences sometimes. But... It, but you'll be surprised at how many times he hits you flush. And that's what I'm worried about for Anthony Joshua, is that while a lot of people think if he gets into a gun slinging fight with Joseph Parker, then there's only going to be one winner, and that'll be Anthony Joshua. Not necessarily, because Joseph Parker has been in quite a few gun slinging fights and always come out on top. But either way, he's absolutely correct when he says, if your opponent has got a granite chin, then you weaken the body. Everybody's got their soft area. We've never really seen Joseph Parker take punishment to the gut. But of course, is Anthony Joshua the man to do that? Personally, I doubt it. Because like I said, naturally, Anthony Joshua is a headhunter. That's what he does. He will throw some body shots, of course. But naturally, he's a headhunter. But we'll have to wait and see. Maybe he's going to do some kind of training on this one in camp right now. But we'll have to wait and see. So drop your thoughts below. Click the thumbs up. Subscribe. Catch the next video.